Let's welcome Fred. Uh, I've already introduced him, but for those of you who were not here, Fred is the uh, head of developer relations at Mache currently, and he's uh, overall just an awesome technical evangelist. He's going to talk to you. Well, you'll tell him what he's going to talk about. Uh, we're going to have a questions uh, Q and A session towards the end of his talk. So if you have any questions, you can save them uh, for the end and uh, pick his brain, you know, ask for advice. He can uh, give you a lot of uh, good career tips that we can all use. Welcome, Brett. Thank you. Thank you. How's it going? Good. Great, great. So, uh, yeah, my name is Fidel Carper. Uh, I'm from Montreal. <laughs> What I like to say is that there is no relation with who you are thinking right now. So there is other Harper in Canada, but it's not it's not related. It's not related. So uh, if you're on Twitter, feel free at f Harper. This is my Twitter handle. Out of comfortzone.net. Uh, I'm going to put a recording of the session if you want to learn more, like listen at another point. So this is my personal blog, uh, blog post in French, blog, blog post in English, most of the time in Franklish. So, uh, Sebastian asked me to come talk about technology, to come talk about API, to just like use on a, one hour to share with you some stuff. And I started to do a couple of talks in school about personal branding, about differentiating yourself from other people. So uh, this is basically what I'm going to uh, what I'm going to talk uh, about to you today. So uh, the thing is that once you're going to be done with that course or at the end of the year, no matter when you're going to need to start to find an internship or find a job, you're going to be competing with everybody else in the room. You're going to be competing with everybody else in other courses. You're going to be competing with everybody else in other schools. And you're going to be competing with every developer in the world. We are living in a era right now where remote working is, is more and more true. There is a lot more companies doing remote working. Actually, my last three jobs, I was working for a US company in Montreal. So I was basically kind of stealing jobs from a US developer or US technical evangelist. <laughs> Good job, Fred. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna, not going to find this funny if US people still jump from you. But that, that happened. So uh, the thing is that when are you going to be done with that course, instead of Except the homeworks that you're going to do, you will all have the kind of same experience. You will all have basically the kind of same knowledge. I'm saying like with double quote. But still, you're going to compete with people that have the same experience as you. So uh, what I'm going to... That's just not working. Let's do this. So again, you're going to need to find a way to get out of the crowd. And there is one solution that worked well, really well for me, for people, and that's called personal branding. So you can think that it's kind of like selfish to think about yourself, trying to think about the brand, about yourself. But you're going to see that uh, you can get a lot about uh, personal branding. That's going to help you not just after school, but for, for all your career. So basically, what is personal branding? Can you recognize that brand? Coca-Cola, exactly. <laughs> you should fire that teacher. <laughs> so it's Pepsi. But the thing you may not notice is that it's not the exact logo. It's just a designer that decided to create again the logo with only circles. But we recognize this because it's so strong. Even if we don't drink Pepsi, even if we don't drink Southern, we recognize that brand. What about this one? Harley. Harley Davidson. How many people found that it was Harley Davidson? Like nearly half the room. So the people that recognize that logo, obviously it's not it's not the real logo. It's again made with circle. So the people that recognize that logo, they have a Harley Davidson at home. Yes, you got one. Yeah, I want one. You would like one. So the thing is that we recognize that brand, or some of them, some of us recognize that brand because it's well it's well known. It's usually a synonym of what? Quality, really great motorcycle, power, maybe noisy, performance, maybe criminals. 
Because <laughs> we see a lot of motors using those, uh, those, those bikes. But again, we recognize that brand and we associate, associate that brand with some keywords, either positive or even some negative. So personal branding is a little bit about the same. So it's not about associating some word with logo, but it's about thinking about some specific person when it comes uh, to some specific keywords, some specific expertise. You're doing some front end stuff. If I'm uh, saying, you know, the, like the uh, godfather of uh, web standard, or one of the great guys that did a lot for uh, CSS and HTML, you may know Jeffrey Zellman. That may be one name that comes to mind. If you think about CSS or a developer that is doing it, so much CSS, so many CSS stuff, that there's a lot of people that think that she is a designer. You may think about Leah Veru. So there is those names, those expertise that are associated with some keyword, with some expertise, with some different way of thinking than other people. So personal brand name, if you don't know Paul Irish, this is a, another evangelist, a Google uh, developer, a Google Chrome advocate, uh, really nice guy at Google. And what he said in one is in in uh, his presentation is that personal branding is the art of consistently presenting online and offline the essence of how you stand out from the crowd. So personal branding is really about showing to other people who you are. And it's really just about you. It's about yourself. So it may sound selfish, but bear with me. You gotta understand why it's really critical. And it's about you in any way. Even the bad part of you. People people's gonna notice those part of you. It's about what you know, the knowledge you have. It's about what you're doing. The job you had, the internship you had, the homework you created. It's about what you did also. As an example, I created a user group in Montreal called HTML5 Montreal. At some point I had to leave that user group because I did not have enough time to continue to work with it. But I, nobody was able to like Remove that achievement from me. I was one of the guys who created that user group. So people won't remove what you did in the past. So keep this in mind, this is super important. Your tribe, the people that you know, and the people that know you. So it seems like uh, a little bit, I don't know, um, do I talk to the guy next to me in class? Maybe you don't, but you should. You should because that's gonna add one other person to your network and you never know when that person may be your employer in two years, three years. You never know if that person could be a colleague that will refer you to the company you want to work for. You never know if that could be someone you can hire in 10 years, 15 years. So your tribe is really important. It's about what you like and it's also about what you don't like. And we see it with social media today, it's super easy to say, oh, that movie sucks. Oh, that restaurant, terrible food. Oh, it was too uh, expensive. We're so, so quick to go on Twitter and on Facebook and even on LinkedIn and complain about things. But it's part of your brand. So it's really about everything that defines you. Personal side, also on the professional side. So where I'm going with this? The thing is that everybody in the room, you already have a personal brand may not know it, but you already have a personal brand. People think stuff about you. People associate things about you. And we all do this. You probably have all opinions on other people in the room, whether it's good or not good. So the thing is that you already have that brand. You already have a label stamp in the front. And that's gonna change depending on the people. But there is, if you do that exercise and you ask other people, what do you think about me? But like, really, be honest, I'm not gonna be offended. You do this, you may be surprised, <laughs> positively or no, about what people think about you. But the thing is that you're gonna see some recurring team about what people think about you. Oh, this guy, well, he did super great demo about his JavaScript library. He's probably a JavaScript expert, but like really good. I don't know what he's doing in that course, but this guy or this girl seems really, really good. That may not be true, but this is what people think about you because you did a great job, you did a great presentation. So you already have a brand, so you better take care of it. You better manage that brand. You better take the ownership of that brand. 
So personal story, uh, introduced me at the, as the uh, head of uh, developer relations at Mache. So I'm a technical evangelist. What does that mean? I know some people doesn't like that term. Uh, I'm not going to church every Sunday. My job is to talk to developers. So I do things in uh, schools. I do presentation in conferences and user group. I help people online. I'm on social media. And my job is to create awareness, educate developer, mostly with developer. Those are my uh, public, my audience. Trying to educate them trying to excite them about different technology, and really trying to help them be ex being successful. So it's a kind of like technical, public, marketing, vendor, and a lot of things roll, but without the pressure of vending, without the pressure of pushing technology in the throat of people, it's really just about getting some visibility for the company. So now I'm managing a team at my shape of evangelists doing this. Previously, I was doing this at Mozilla, the people behind Firefox. So I've been a senior technical evangelist at Mozilla. But my story began 15 years ago. I'm that home. So uh, I started to do software development, mobile development, web development. I did this for about eight to 10 years, uh, going from small company to like really, really small company where I was the first like developer, the first employee in the company, uh, going to freelancer. But I discovered that technical evangelist job. And I said, oh my god, I want to do this. Like, that seems amazing. I'm social. I like to share my passion about technology. I like coding, but I like people even more. I say, I don't have, I think I have the skills. But I have nothing to prove people that I have that skills. So I said, okay, what are the skills that I need to have to get that job? So I started to get more visibility going to user groups. I started to give presentation. And at some point, Microsoft approached me. And they said, Fred, we heard your name a couple of times. We're looking for a technical evangelist in, in Montreal, covering Canada. Would you like to join us? I said, no. <laughs> but at some point, I joined Microsoft. <laughs> and I did that job for two years and a half. I was traveling all across Canada. Montreal, of course, because I'm there. I came quite often to Toronto. I went to Ottawa, to Vancouver, to Calgary, to Winnipeg. And I was with all those amazing developers talking about technology, trying to tell them that yeah, Microsoft is not that terrible. It's not the dead star that it used to be. It's not the bad guys anymore. So I was traveling all across Canada. It was pretty cool. And after this, I joined Mozilla. I did this for a year and a half. I was traveling all across the world. Again, doing evangelism, talking to developers. In a year, I probably went to 12 countries. This is pretty exciting. This is a good perk for your job. So I was able to, working on my brand, by working on my brand, I was able to get those amazing jobs. Whether you like Mozilla, whether you like Microsoft, I have those on my resume. And it's not because I'm better than anyone else. It's just because I worked on my brand and I get that visibility that you need to work on your brand. So this is that gave me the, uh, the opportunity to go from what I call the head rate developer. So I think I was good at what I was doing, but I was not the best out there. I see some other developer and I, I want to cry. I say, okay, you guys, you're crazy. So I think I was good. I was not bad, but I was not super good. So I went to that average developer role to my dream job when I learned that that job exists. Talking to developer, doing some conferences, and traveling all across the world. So personal branding really helped me go from point A to point B. So how can you do this? First, you need to define your goal. Why do you want to manage that personal brand? Maybe your primary goal is just, I want to get a job. I'm going to go out from school. You need to define your brand. What? Who are you? What uh, differentiates you from other people? What is that little something that puts you apart? And the thing is that if you come out of that course and you're all, all JavaScript developers, of course, you're not the only one who do JavaScript. I'm not the only evangelist in, the, in this world. There's a lot more evangelists, but what is different from me, from other people? I start of presenting. The fact that I'm always with those jeans and, and, and like geeky t-shirt. The fact that I'm making jokes. My French accent is part of it when I'm presenting. People are like, oh my god, nice accent. I said, like, yeah. So I, I can take those things. So you need to define your brand. What sets you apart from other people? And sometimes it's just a small thing. That can be personal, that can be professional. But you need to think about those things. 
That seems super weird, but you need to define it who you are. If you take the time, like a couple of hours, to just think about who you are, that could be an interesting uh, test to do. You need to define who you want to be. And this is important. This is not about lying. This is about what is the next step. What do you want to improve? Right now, you're a JavaScript developer. You want to be the best JavaScript developer. That could be a goal. My goal at some point was to become a public speaker. I told you, I found a conference in Montreal, uh, PodCamp Montreal, and I, w uh, I was lucky enough because they were giving chances to uh, UB, people who never spoke at conferences before. I went there, did my first talk. What did I do after my first talk? I went on Twitter and LinkedIn, and I had public speaker to my bio. Mm -hmm. It was true. I was not the best speaker out there. I was not the speaker with the most experience. But I was a public speaker. I did one talk. And that helped me to show people that I was good at doing this, or at least that I wanted to do this. Now, I have more than 100 talks that I did in different conferences, different user groups, and different places. I think I'm a little bit better than I was in my first talk. But I never lied. I was a public speaker at that point. What I did when I started to do talks outside of Canada, after my first talk, I think my, my first talk uh, outside of Canada was in Poland. I changed public speaker to international public speaker. <laughs> and I did one talk outside of Canada, but I was an international start, uh, public speaker. So it's not about lying. It's really about helping people see you, uh, how you want those people to see you. It's always about being authentic. Never lie about anything, because that can work for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, a couple of years. But at some point, you're going to receive that big punch in your face, and everything's going to fall apart. So really keep this in mind. Do what you love. We're talking about the Internet of Things, another word that you like, another term that you like. So uh, this is a cool thing right now. It's been there for a while, but I don't know, for the last one or two years, it just exploded. Like, everybody's talking about the Internet of Things. There's a good future. There's probably a lot of money you can do out of it. If you don't like it, don't do it. Don't do this. So do what you love and make it art. Make it to the next level. And make your own rules. I used to say that I don't take no for an answer. I'm not that annoying person who will push too much. But I try and I ask people. There is nothing wrong to knock to a door and ask for something. You want that cool job in a company. Don't wait to see if there is an offer online. Try to find someone in that company. Talk to that person. Worst case, no job available. Won't get a job. Best case, oh yeah, it's true. You may want someone to do that kind of job that you're looking for. You seem like, an, like a nice person. You may get that job. But by, by not asking, it's 100% it's sure you, will, you won't get that job. So really, concretely, what can you do starting now, like right after that course? So there is one secret ingredient that will help you, and it's getting some visibility. <laughs> you can be the best developer out there if nobody knows you. You can have the best product. You can work on the best software if nobody sees it. That doesn't work. So visibility is super important. But it's not about being that annoying person who always just talk about yourself or always trying to promote your stuff. You need to find a good mix. But it's super important. First thing, if you're not on Google or Bing, whatever, you don't exist. Dun -dun. That was dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> you don't exist. I should add this to the presentation. Uh, so do the test. Go on Google, search for yourself. Be that narcissistic. Try this, and you may be surprised. You may find some links or some pictures that you don't want others to find. <laughs> and trust me, when I was recruiting people, I was searching for those people on the web. I was looking at their Facebook account. I was not stalking people, but I wanted to know a little more about those people, even before the interview. And it's not about, hey, it's okay if you're partying. You have a life. I just want to be sure that once you're going to be in front of your desk, you're going to be able to do the job. So try this. Search for yourself. How many of you have a blog? One or two? Yeah, you have half a blog. 
<laughs> kind of. Yeah. Or it's not updated for like years. We had to do one for portfolio. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, so use the one that you create for the portfolio. You have no idea how my blog helped me for a lot of things. I got job offers. I got uh, offers to write books coming from my blogs. I got offered to speak at a conference. People that did not know me, that was searching on Google, that was ser searching for like experts with different topics, they land on some blog post I did. And because I'm really, really honest in my way of blogging, and my blog is not that technical. I do all my technical blog posts on the company blog. So my blog is more kind of personal-ish kind of blog. But what I do, when I do an interview, I send my, uh, my uh, link to my blog. I say, read the blog. You're going to see who I am. And if you disagree or you don't like what you're reading, don't hire me because we're going to have to work together. So a blog will help you to get some visibility, to show your expertise, even if you don't have a lot of experience. You can show, like you were, some people were demoing some uh, library and they had issues with the library. Blog about what the issues you had and how you fixed it. That may help other people. That will get you, get you that visibility. And again, you're going to be able to show that you have some expertise. Be on social media. I think it's, shouldn't remove just that slide when I go to school. Everybody's on social media, but still. Uh, there's a lot of people that are not on social media yet. Yeah, Twitter is just about sh uh, sharing the food that I'm eating. I'm the first one to do this quite often, sorry about that. I'm posting a lot of cat pictures. <laughs> but at the same time, Twitter helped me a lot. When I, when I was a freelancer, people were referring me jobs or potential customers on Twitter. People that I did not know. People that were like, oh, Fred is in bio. I wrote at that time, I was doing some iPhone development. And I said, okay, I saw that Fred is, is, is now uh, is on bus and he's doing iPhone development. Should work with him. He's a super, really good developer. And that person that was saying this never worked with me. So I could have been like the worst developer in the world. But they thought that it was great. And they, they, they sent me some potential customers. So it's really a fool. And again, I'm coming back to that visibility side of thing. That's going to help you to get some visibility. That's going to help you to grow your network. There's a lot of people going to FITC. What about speaking at FITC? Or any other conferences. There's full stack Toronto. There's you have a lot of conferences. Or even user groups. Or if you don't speak, volunteer. That's gonna be great. First, if you speak, what's interesting is that when you're in front of people, you're already expert. Even if there's other people in the room that know a lot more than you, even if there's some stuff you say that are not quite true and you tell that they were true, but you were wrong, it's okay. But you get again that visibility. And it's great if you want to start your own company, create a startup, you're going to get, again, that visibility, you're going to create some contact with those people in the room. And sometimes it's less about who you know than who knows you. And being in front of people help a lot about people knowing you, even if you don't know you. Even if you don't know them, sorry. But volunteering, it's also interesting. You're going to meet with the crew organizing the events, and usually those people are quite influential in the, in the community, or they know a lot of people. You may have the opportunity to hang with speakers. And again, those people are uh, influential. You want to know them, or you want to have a contact with those people. What about a user group? There is a lot of user groups in, in Toronto. Maybe there is one, maybe there is one missing. It's not about the technology you like. Why not start a user group? It's less complicated than you think. By starting that user group, again, I was Talking about that uh, HTML5 user group I created in Montreal, I also created a festival called Geek Fest Montreal, and uh, it's not even related to the tech. I ran that festival for two years, gave that festival to someone else because I didn't have the time anymore. But because it was Geek Festival, everybody was like, Fred is the geekiest person that we know. And it's not true. I have friends that are a lot more geek than me. But because I started that conference, I get it. This is how people see me. Like, Fred is a geek guy. I started HTML5 Montreal. Again, Fred is the best HTML5 developer I ever know. It's not true. But I started that user group, so I get that visibility. But I don't do this to have that, that title. 
It's because I enjoy to do this. I enjoy to share with the community. So it's a great way. If you see something missing, and trust me, in great cities like Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, those big cities, you can have as many user groups as you want. People will still go to the user groups. Montreal, I think we have like three, like at least at every evening there is a user groups running and they have 20 to 100 people per user groups. Developers, there is a lot of developers, there's, they, they are always looking to somewhere to go to learn more and to meet people. Take open source. I really like what you said at the beginning, like there's those libraries, oh, you missed that feature? Do a pull request. GitHub is the... the there's a lot of people that say that GitHub is the new uh, CV, the new resume. I tend to disagree a little bit, but again, it's super good. Like, like when you go to interview, you send your link uh, to your GitHub profile. This is pretty good. I would have liked to, to, to have this when I was recruiting people. That would make my life easier. To understand a little bit your way of thinking, uh, how you're coding, the quality of your code. And I like people that are involved in open source. And there is so many projects. And if you don't find the one that makes sense for you, create one. Help other people. Stack Overflow. Some people like Stack Overflow. Some other people don't like Stack Overflow because that's coming from that era of copy-pasting code and people doesn't think. They just copy and paste what's working. But still, it's still great Stack Overflow the biggest forum out there for technical question. What is great is that you can help people and you're gonna get points and no matter if the point system is great or bad, you still get some points. And again, it's a profile that you can send to potential uh, employer. Hey, look, I answered, I don't know, 20 questions about CSS3. And people said that my, my answers were good. That proved your expertise. That proved that you know what you're talking about. Even more with something with Stack Overflow, people can be super rude. So when people accept your answer, it's probably because it's like it was really sharp. You got the answer well. Maybe you don't have time, or you don't want to write code because now it's kind of great. You listen to the teacher, you do some homework, something. But when you're gonna be a developer, you're gonna code all day for a living. Even if you like coding, you will have a family. You probably have a family already. Friends, you have other things to do. You may not want to code all day long, even when you go back home. There is a way to help the community. There is a way to create that brand. Write some documentation. There is a lot of open wiki out there. I put Firefox in as an example because I used to work in Mozilla. And I think those are really, really huge communities. You can go on Bugzilla and you can submit bug. You don't have time to fix those or don't know C++ to fix the Firefox engine? Submit a bug. That's helping a lot. And you can, you can brag about it. I submitted I submit a, a bug to Firefox and they fixed it. I was useful to like those millions of people using Firefox. Or go on um, Mozilla Developer Network. Personally, I think this is the best, one of the best documentation when it comes to JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. But this is an open wiki. You see something missing? Add it. You see an error? Correct it. So those are other ways that you can participate in the community and build that brand and get some experience without having to like work in a company yet. Any people with design skills? Yeah. Yeah, I sucked at design. <laughs> I really know. That was a well-known fact in the previous company when I was a developer. I was like, I'm going to do the code, but someone needs to go after me to clean, not clean the code, but do like a better UI. So, uh, but Dribble, Dribble. I don't even know to say this, like Triple B. You go on Dribble, you can create a portfolio with the website you created. Your animation that you did with uh, the whole, I think uh, was super interesting. You can put this there. It was like super colorful. This is the kind of things that I like to see. You go on Dribble, create a profile, it's free. It's another way to showcase your expertise, showcase your uh, design skills. Do a certification. I know maybe now it's cool. You may not want to do a certification on top of this, but at some point, that can be useful depending on which kind of company you want to work for, which kind of technology you want to use. Uh, like Oracle has some uh, certification, Microsoft has some certification. Usually it's, a, it's about 99 bucks to uh, try the exam. And if you get it, uh, there's a company that tell people that say, hey, this person have the skills, or at least know how to study a book and pass the exam. So it depends on the certification. And there's some company that don't <laughs> care about those, but there's a lot of company that care. There is even company 
that's going to give you a bonus once you work there if you get those certifications. Because after this, when you're going to apply for a project, you're going to be able to say, hey, I have like X number of employee developer that got a Microsoft certification. So this is another way to add to your skill. Because the thing that, no matter the school where you go, no matter how amazing they are, what they're teaching you today, in the year, two year, I'm really generous, there's a lot of things that won't apply. The, the, the super specific things won't apply. Everything else, the way of thinking, the way of developing will always be like, like uh, good. But the specific technology you use today, the tech world is going so fast that in a year or two, that's not gonna, that's gonna be something else. When the certification can help you prove to other people that, hey, I know the new cool stuff or the new technology that you use in your company. You can also get, and that's probably gonna be a little bit later when you're gonna, you're gonna have a little more experience, but you can get industry recognition. Again, I, I will talk about uh, Microsoft because I used to work there and I know how it's working. They have that Microsoft, uh, no, that most valuable professional called MVP. And what they're basically saying is that for some people in the community that have a specific expertise to a specific project uh, or product at Microsoft, but are also involved in the community and help the community to, to learn about, to be excited about, to be successful with those products. They gave that recognition. No matter if you like Microsoft product or not, it's great. You can say, hey, Microsoft, recognize me for that specific technology. They recognize my expertise. There is a lot of values in this. And there is a lot of companies that have those things. Mozilla also had a, a similar program. They call those uh, Remo, uh, Mozilla Representative. And it's really about that are people that are super excited about the mission, that do good stuff to help the community to learn more about the open web, to learn more about Mozilla product. So this is something interesting also. Because, it's, again, it's a company that recognizes something specific in you. And it's not something you can get at the corner of the street or in a box of uh, Cracker Jack. Last tip, network, network, and network. And when you think you're done, network again. I told you, your tribe, the people that you know, the people that know you are super, super important. People that you know offline, people that you know online. I didn't met, I think we met once or twice. Yeah. A couple of times. I cannot say that like we're super best friend offline, but I think online we have a great relationship. So when he invited me, I said, yes, like let me find where I can fit this in my school. I'm going to go talk to your, 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 your classroom. That's going to be a pleasure. This is super important. Again, I was telling about how I get my, my jobs. When I get what Microsoft approached me, Again, it was not because I was better than anyone else. It was because I had a, an interesting network. It was because, it, it's because I get that visibility. When I decided to leave Microsoft, I did a blog post on my blog, and I said, hey, leaving Microsoft, looking for a new job. I did not have to search for a job. This is incredible. This is amazing. I did not have to search for a job. Again, was it because I was the best developer evangelist in the world? No. It's because, fortunately, my job gave me the opportunity to grow my network. So I had a really, really interesting network. So people came to me and said, Fred, we heard about you, saw you speak at a conference, saw your blog, saw what you did, would you like to work for us? And that was the same thing when I decided to leave Mozilla. And I got plenty of interesting offers. So I got a first world problem. I had to find which job I wanted. And again, I want to be crystal clear. Sometimes people think that I'm a, I'm a little bit narcissistic, but I think it comes with the evangelist job. You need to be just a little bit. But uh, it's not because I was better than anyone else. It's because I had an amazing network, a really amazing network. But how did I achieve this? Blogging, I'm blogging, tweeting, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+. I'm going to user groups, but I'm not just sitting and waiting for the speaker. I talk to people, I introduce myself to people that I now know. I understand that not everybody have that level of comfort about talking to people, but it's something you can practice. For me, it's a little bit easy because I, I'm an extrovert, I like people, it's easy for me, but I saw people 
there's a lot of opportunity to do this. And I saw people that went from like super introvert, shy, nearly into social, social. And, and, and it's not a bad thing. But if you want to get work, you need to go out a little bit out, out of your comfort zone. But by doing this, that's going to help you in every sphere of your life. Trust me. So when, you, when should you start to work on your personal brand? Yesterday. Yesterday. This is the same kind of thing when people ask me, oh, I would like to create a LinkedIn profile. I'm looking for a job now. It's too late. You should have worked on your LinkedIn profile way before. So same thing for LinkedIn. It's a great example. Same thing for personal brand. You may not need to find a job right now. So it's a good time to start to work on that brand, to get that visibility, to network. It's really an investment. It's not just about your next job. It's a continuous work. You always have to work on that brand. And how much time you will spend to do this will depend on how much time you can, what is your goal, and how you can integrate everything together. You can, there's a couple of things you can start by right? being at school. The project that you create as homework, why not do the extra mile and publish them on GitHub? If you're a little bit proud of your code, if you're not, don't do this. But if you're proud of what you achieve, publish it on, on GitHub. That's going to give you some stuff to demo uh, when you're going to look for a job. So you're hardly expert. You have that little something that other people don't have. You're, not, you're always going to be the expert of someone else. You always have that little something that's going to be part of your brand that's going to make you unique. But again, you don't need to find that super niche thing. Like being a super good JavaScript developer is great. There is a lot of JavaScript developer, but you're going to have your specific something that's going to put you apart from other people. And leave a mark on everything you do. I told you about using your passion and make it art. Everybody can do average stuff. Everybody. That needs exceptional people to really deliver quality work, to really deliver that extra mile. And deliver that extra mile, extra mile on everything you do. So it only scratches the surface. I wanted to take uh, the last part of uh, that session, the other 30 minutes. So you can ask me questions on anything uh, going from personal branding to how is it to work in the industry to what is technical evangelist to everything. I have no issues with any questions. If you want to reach me after because you have another question, uh, if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, again, that's going to help you grow your network. You're going to know one more person. I may not be that credible, but that could help. <laughs> but you can send me an email. I'm uh, still a uh, whole geezer using email. I love emails. It's the best way to reach me. So you can do this at frper at oocz.net. Twitter, it's also a good way to reach me at frper. Out of comfort, out of comfort zone.net. I told you I'm going to put the slides there and the recording of the presentation. And uh, yeah, I want to do selfish promotion, but talking about personal branding, I wrote a book at APRESS. So if you want to know more, uh, there is also a book at A Press about personal branding. So that's it. Any question, comment, insult, insult? <laughs>